Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, you know what I've been doing? I've been listening to KC and JoJo and they've been looking at things. Oh yeah, yeah. I told you, oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna have a little bit of KC in our background. He and uh, Mr. Jojo, not their problems, just KC and Jojo gonna be hanging out with us right now. I just need to show this to you guys because it's very important. I've been saying this to people, yelling and screaming for years from prior to 2012, saying, hey, ladies and gentlemen, they didn't loan you no money. They loaned you credit. Now, hold on now. We got to prove this. Whoa, oh, oh, why? I'm sorry. This is for life. He's still in love, y'all. Oh, yeah, yeah. Give me one second. Let me uh, make this larger because we need you guys to be able to see what we're talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, all of you have a what's called as a Truth in Lending Act statement, not just for mortgages, student loans, automobile loans. It is a requirement because they're loaning you credit. So the law, what credit extensions or extensions of credit is that they must provide you with a Truth in Lending Act statement. Just got to call them and ask them for it. Okay, here's the thing. The cost of your credit. Yeah, this is your credit. It's not theirs. The cost of your credit as a yearly rate. Pay attention. The dollar amount of the credit will cost you. Dollar amount the credit will cost you. Oh, pay attention. The amount of credit provided to you or on your behalf. Excuse me? How are you going to give somebody credit on my behalf? Huh? Why are you giving them my credit and then telling them it's from me? Pay attention. Ladies and gentlemen, what did the bank give? Where's the, the Truth and Lending Act shows all of the finances associated. So what did the bank give you? Absolutely nothing of value. There's no value associated with the credit. There's no valuation for the credit. So hold on, let me make sure y'all understand. You gotta, gotta tell you, we, I've been talking with this stupid thing back and forth to get it to understand what I'm asking because it wanted to give me the party line and I don't like party lines. Okay, I, I'd usually hang up the phone if I'm, uh, you know, got that party line thing going on. I don't like party lines. So let me go ahead and point it out to y'all. Hey, KC, Joe, give me a second. You're down with me for life. You're down with me for life. Oh, yeah. Anyway, sorry about that. All right. Wells Fargo Bank versus Beck. Hey, what up, Beck? I knew a Beck. Anyway, this case involved. A challenge to Wells Fargo's use of the non-judicial foreclosure process. What's the non-judicial foreclosure process? Oh, I thought you would never ask. Oh, snap. Hey, hey, the non-judicial foreclosure act is when they put you through court. They send you them no notice. We're going to sell your property. You in default. And then you go to court after they sell your property and you get kicked out. That's a non-judicial foreclosure process when they just do paperwork. Ain't no trial, no nothing. And they just, the only trial you get is... Did you pay? No, I didn't pay. All right, get out. That's the only trial you get. That's called the non-judicial foreclosure process. Ladies and gentlemen, they can't do the non-judicial foreclosure process on you. Why can't they? Hold on, pay attention. The court held that the mere existence of a defaulted loan does not automatically satisfy the substantial risk of loss. Remember that those are your best friends right there. Substantial risk of financial loss. You want to hold on to that phrase, requirement, because it's a requirement that the bank demonstrate that they are at a substantial list of financial loss. Where, 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 where was the funding? If the loan funded, where did the funds come from? You loaned me credit. How could you fund credit? Ladies and gentlemen, you can't fund credit. Credit is not funds. Okay, pay attention. The court emphasized the need for evidence that the lenders of the lenders' actual financial hardship due to the default beyond just the technical existence of a debt. 
You see that you see how they said technical existence of a debt? Because there is no debt. This is what we're doing for y'all people. And I'm giving this to all the rest of you so that you can have this information, so that you can have this fire! Fire! If it never fight anyway. Hold on now. Madden. Hey John, what up, boy? John Madden versus JP Morgan Chase. No, that's not John Madden, okay? I he was deceased by then. No, he wasn't. Yes, he was. Anyway, this case similarly challenged the use of the non-judicial foreclosure process by Chase Bank. The court found that the bank's reliance on the borrower's default as the sole evidence of financial risk was insufficient. That's not enough. You can't just say they're in default. They have to do better than say they're at default. They have to be able to prove that they're at a financial risk. Financial loss, significant. Not just any financial loss, a significant, substantial, significant. See, was insufficient. They need significant demonstration. The court emphasized that the lender must demonstrate a specific financial hardship caused by the default, not just the fact that the default of the default itself. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why you got to challenge. You got to challenge, you got to challenge, you got to challenge. You got to challenge the debt, challenge the debt, challenge the debt, challenge the debt. Aquin Loan Servicing, LLC versus Johnson and Johnson and Johnson and Johnson and Johnson and Johnson. It's a big family of Johnson. This case involved the challenge to Aquin's use of the non-judicial foreclosure process. The court held that the lender's reliance on the general statistical data about the loan default is insufficient to establish general statistical data. Just a piece of paper with some numbers on it is insufficient to establish a substantial risk of financial loss in a specific case. The court emphasized the need of evidence specific to the borrower and the loan in question. Now, hold on, pay attention. A financial statement placed on the record is not evidence. It doesn't even comport to the rules of evidence. That's right, I said comport. Comport. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that financial statement is not evidence. That's why you have the right when you go to trial saying, I need to see evidence of the debt. I don't know of any debt. I, that loan is paid off. You have any proof? No, I don't want to have proof. Y'all need to prove that it ain't paid off. I don't need to prove that it is. Y'all are bringing forth the presumption. So prove your case. Mother, you're going to sit up here and ask me for proof. Y'all better sit up here and provide y'all own proof. How do, who the, do you think I am? See, y'all are not doing stuff like that. Y'all are not making them prove that you owe a debt. Just showing up in court, even in bankruptcy court, you guys are arguing the wrong things. Make them prove they are a creditor. Make them prove that loan is still outstanding. Ah, uh, knock me out. Anyway, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, hold on now. I took it over to Perplexity. I see all that right there. Watch this. I said, hey, hey, Perplexity. What up, homie? Perplexity, I got some questions for you. Person said, what, what up, fool? And I I, I, I put that, that whole thing. Wells Fargo, blah, 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 Chase Manhattan Bank. Uh, and Perplexity, you know what Perplexity said? I'm going to give you all this. This is going to be the link in the, in the bottom. So y'all going to be able to see because you're going to see this is exactly what I put in there. And Perplexity gave me an answer. She said, in this case, Wells Fargo did this, that, and the other. And Johnson did that. And it all involved challenges to the non judicial foreclosure process by different banks. Each case, the court emphasized the need for the lender to provide evidence of a specific financial hardship caused by the borrower's default rather than relying solely on the existence of a default itself. The court held, because they're just relying on the fact that the contract says in the event of a default. They're just relying on that. That's not good enough. They must prove. Now, hold on. Now, I want you to know this. <laughs> because the moment I put that in there, it wanted to give a caveat, talking about the Supreme Court of the state of California saying, oh, no, uh -uh, they can they can still foreclose on your property because it is bad. Nope, nope, nope. Uh -uh, that case ain't got nothing to do with this. That a consumer credit transaction or an extension of credit does not evidence a substantial risk of financial loss if there is an associated default. Ladies and gentlemen, pay attention. It's a consumer credit transaction. Where did they get the credit from? The credit means, pay attention, that 
there is no valuation of the credit. Pay attention. There's no valuation of the credit. They're giving a temporary credit to someone else. And so now they need to prove that they're at a loss for something. Because guess what? They created the credit. Out of thin air. So where's the documentation of a substantial risk of financial loss? Without that substantial risk of financial loss, they have no standing. That's what I've been trying to tell y'all. I hope y'all keep listening. Because y'all, y'all, we got some talking to do. Come on now. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. All right. Ladies and gentlemen. See, I told you I asked it all those questions. So, I understand your need for further case citations supporting the conclusion that the mere occurrence of a default on a consumer credit transaction or extension of credit does not necessarily evidence a substantial risk of financial loss for the lender. In the context of the non-judicial foreclosure, while the three initial cases provided strong arguments, let's explore additional legal precedents. Ah, yeah. Sorry. I, y'all know what I do when music is playing. That's Casey and JoJo, okay? They're talking about for life, okay? Anyway, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation and New Century Macaulay Mortgage Corporation in this case, involved the Federal Deposit Insurance Company challenging New Century's use of the non-judicial foreclosure due to a lack of evidence of substantial risk of financial loss because it was all based on credit. Now, how can the Federal Insurance Deposit Corporation, the FDIC, sue New Century? How can they sue this mortgage company? What's the FDIC mortgaging something for? Because the FDIC is a private corporation, people. They're not government. They're an insurance company. Okay, see, insurance corporation. They're an insurance company. Lord have mercy. The court emphasized that relying solely on a substantial data or generic claim of financial hardship is insufficient. They required the lender to demonstrate a specific individualized evidence of financial harm. Evidence, ladies and gentlemen, that means you have a right to challenge the evidence. You have a right to contest the evidence. That's what you want. Now this is Freeman versus Citibank. Hey, what up, Freeman? I, man, I heard that you were. I heard that you were in prison. Oh, you ain't no more. Oh, okay. Yeah, the name. Okay, no problem. The case raised similar concerns as the Citibank case. Use of the non-judicial foreclosure. The court again stressed the need for specific evidence that the lenders of the lenders financial harm beyond the generic knowledge of a potential loss for loan defaults. They highlight the importance of considering factors of the collateral value, potential for loan recovery, and the borrower's financial circumstances. Now, hold on now. That's not the law. The law is they must prove that they're at a loss. Hold on. Bank of America versus Jones. Man, I met that fool. Anyway, this case challenged Bank of America's use of non judicial foreclosure on similar grounds. The court reiterated the requirement that the lenders demonstrate a financial harm linked to the individual default, not just rely on broad claims of potential losses. They considered factors like the borrower's ability to negotiate repayment plan or sell the property to mitigate the lender's potential loss. Wells Fargo, home mortgage versus, oh, this is bankruptcy court. And read, this bankruptcy case also addressed the substantial risk requirement non judicial foreclosure court reaffirmed the need for specific evidence financial harm to the lender by the particular defaulter as opposed to a generic association now what what i'm about to do y'all hold on now we gotta get that right there Uh uh-oh it ain't gonna let me let's do it again i'm trying to highlight it ain't letting me highlight y'all so let me tell you what i'm about to do Is it real? The feelings that I feel. Now, hold on now. Give me one second. Copy. And I take it over to perplexity.ai. Because eventually they're going to link the two together. Because perplexity is, uh, what is it, ChatGPT? And 
and I, I'm not saving no history here either. Perplexity is ChatGPT and Bard is Google. And so that's the problem. They don't like each other. And so I get to use them against each other. Ha <laughs> ha! Tell me it's real. All right. The substantial risk of financial loss requirement and non-judicial closure serves to ensure that lenders provide specific evidence of financial hardship caused by the borrower's default rather than relying solely on the evidence of the default itself. This requirement is underscored in legal cases such as the Federal Deposit Insurance Company. The court in these cases emphasized the need for the lender to demonstrate a specific individualized evidence of financial harm due to the particular default rather than relying on statistical data and genetic claims of the financial hardship. They also highlighted the importance of considering factors of the collateral value, the potential loan recovery, and the borrower's financial circumstances when asserting the risk of financial loss. <sighs> These cases reinforce the legal principle that the mere occurrences of default on a consumer credit transaction does not automatically translate to a substantial risk or financial loss for the lender in the context of non judicial foreclosure. The lenders are obliged to provide specific and individualized evidence of financial harm directly linked to the borrower's default to meet the legal requirements for utilizing this procedure. Okay? This is me telling you guys that that's what we've been doing. We've been providing rebuttal documentation for each of our clients, every single one of them who are involved in AMCF and Ameri Legion. Ladies and gentlemen, this is me telling you, this. these are the things we're relying on. Yes, 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 you ain't heard nobody else bring this stuff up before. We've been told y'all about this for years. I've been talking about it since 2007, okay? I've already known for most of my life that there was no such thing as money. There is no money, ladies and gentlemen. If you believe in money, then you are a fool. Oh, excuse me, you're an idiot. <clears throat> a, mor a moron. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, why? Pay attention to the so-called Constitution. The states may coin nothing but gold or silver as money. There is no such thing as money. There's no such thing as money. They coin it as money. There's no such thing as money, people. Never was. Look at the dollar bill. It tells you this note is legal tender good for the payment of all debts, both public and private. It's only utilized for paying debts. That's not money. You can purchase things with money. In our current debt society, our debt-driven society, you've heard these phrases before. Okay, in our current debt-driven society, you cannot purchase anything with money because money doesn't exist. Gold and silver are not money. They are coined as money, but they are not money. So when you finally come to grips with the fact that there's no money, then you'll realize that you're not in debt. When you come to grip with the fact that you're not in debt, then you'll see the whole world completely different. Then you'll start discharging stuff properly. But until you realize that, you're gonna be stuck in the muck. Oh, mama, look what he just said. He said muck. What's wrong with muck? Man, I saw muck the other day, and muck got on my muck, well, you know, nerves. Yeah, that was muck. Oh, what the muck? You see what I'm saying? All right, look, hey, I got to go. Y'all can tell I'm tired, but I still got work to do, okay? We are trying to communicate this to our clients, so I'm doing the video plus doing the communication, and we're going to take care of that thing, all right? Got to go take care of some things. Arrivederci.